Welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm taking a really detailed look at the Lightforce 20 inch single row light bar. Um, this is the Viper bar um, and I'm going to talk you through installation on my Prado 150. I have already installed spotlights on my Prado 150 um, using uh, linking into the high beam sensor, the automatic high beam sensor. So I thought I uh, got quite a few questions back on that uh, and I realized the video that I did wasn't very detailed. So if you stick with this or skip to that part, I will take you into the real detail of how to connect into the high beam sensor and the harnesses that you need extra harnesses. Anyway, let's get on with the light force bar comes in a lovely box and i thought i'd get in a bit of detail on this because when i was looking at buying this there's very little actually about the very close-ups of the light and the fixings and everything and what what you get so in the box the cardboard uh, obviously the light comes with it um nicely packaged one of the things i liked about this light was the the very slim profile so uh, because you'll see later when I'm going to mount it, I wanted the very slim uh, height and also depth. So it's pretty slim there. Um, it does have this track along the back, which we'll come to in a minute, where you fix the uh, the brackets to it. So it obviously comes with a Deutsch plug. Uh, yeah, anyway, so end fixings there. Also in the box, you get uh, a light force wiring loom. So obviously single connector. Now the one thing that I wasn't clear of um, on the uh, on the website was, yes, it comes with this uh, pin connector here, obviously for feeding it through uh, into the dash. Um, that's actually uh, looking at that. That's actually quite a short uh, piece from the actual connector through to the switch. And the switch just has the three wires, so that was one of the things I wasn't clear of uh, when I was looking at it. Obviously, I'm going to take that switch off and put on an alternative switch. I'm guessing that one will be neutral and the others will be the switch wires. So, uh, but we'll come to that a bit later. Anyway, and then obviously the fuse, so it's fuse there. And we'll get into their wiring and uh, what they suggest in the wiring, but you've got obviously your positive and negative feed uh, and an earth uh, there. Um, uh, and this will be the interesting thing for me because I'm currently using a steady uh, high beam sensor harness uh, and I'm going to see if I can connect this into it without uh, making any other changes. So also in the box we get, uh, looks like we get some brackets. So that's it in there. So we've got an end bracket, one end bracket there with all the nuts and bolts on it and a second end bracket. No, that's not the end bracket. Uh, no, two end brackets must be in there. Let's have a look. Helps if you open it, doesn't it? So, uh, yeah, there's the two end brackets, right angled end brackets, that you can obviously fit on the end for mounting that way. And then, more importantly for me, I'm going to be using these brackets. So, these are the rear brackets that they also supply with it. So I've already fixed, actually fixed one on. So there's a a nut that sits inside uh, and a bolt there, and it's got these corrugations here, so that when you fix it, so this basically slides in the track. That nut slides in the track, and then you can fix it there. And obviously, with the teeth of the bracket, it will hold it, and you can then look at either mounting it from there. Okay. So I've got to explore a few different mounting options because where I specifically want to mount it on the bull bar, um, I've got a very tight, narrow sort of space. Uh, but you will get to that um, when, you sh when I show you the installation. But anyway, that's the bar at the moment. Uh, and there is a bit of movement in this. So you obviously can, and this was the key thing for me, of understanding that sort of whole movement where you can go from there I guess if that's straight and you can tip it down like that all the way to there if you wanted to so you can have a bit of an angle so if you're mounting at an angle you could in theory mount it straight even though the top of the bracket is at an angle so there like that and that's possibly what interests me uh, anyway and then obviously you can slide that along and bolt it up 
Alrighty, so that's uh, that's the Light Force bar, uh, and I'll get into the actual installation. So the big question with this installation is, can I use my existing steady loom? So at the moment, as I said, I've got the uh, steady spotlights on the front here, uh, and I bought their um, special high beam sensing harness that goes in the Prado. Uh, and then, well, I'll open it up and I'll show you all that in a minute. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to check that the loom that came with the light force uh, light bar can actually pick up off that loom uh, without me having to do anything different or potentially buy a steady, steady harness for the LED bar. Um, should be the same, uh, but you never know. Anyway, so what I've done uh, quickly, not obviously wiring anything in at the moment, laid the loom out here. So this is where, this is where my connection comes across from the uh, the high beam sensing configuration inside as I said I'll show you that later so normally in the steady harness uh, this is where the, it would connect to a the light itself so this plug here would actually connect with their adapters into your headlight um, and then just fire it on from there but because in these vehicles uh, and then I don't know all the technology in this but it's like negative switching and the CAN bus does funny things uh, and you also need to pick up off the high beam sensor. So if a car's coming the other way, it automatically takes it off high beam. So all of that's controlled electronically, so it's never as simple as you'd like it to be. So anyway, so you buy this piggyback adapter thing that goes on the on the switches, and as I said, I'll show you that in a minute. And I used a steady one originally for my spotlights, so I'm tapping into it now with the LED light bar. So this is the LED light bar. I'm just piggybacking into, into that at the moment, I'll stuff the connectors in just to test it. So you're going to get a positive and a negative out of there. And these are the two trigger wires for the uh, LED light bulb, red for positive and actually green for negative in this case. The yellow is the an ignition light, I don't need that at the moment. So taking that down, obviously connected uh, positive and negative straight to the battery. And then I've got my switch. I've got my switch just hanging here at the moment so I can switch it on or off if I want to through the uh, switch that comes with it. So we'll switch it at the moment and then we'll uh, switch on the engine and we'll see what happens. So uh, headlights are on, they're on normal beam at the moment so I hope nothing works so if I switch the switch no, no LED light which is what I want. Obviously I don't want it to come on without the full beam lights on. So we'll go around and we will put on high beam now so let's just get it over to high beam so it's now on high beam okay uh, spotlight shouldn't be on but just high beam headlights so we'll come around and high beam headlights are on definitely so now if I switch this let's see if the LED bar comes on and it does fantastic all right so that's on now uh, we might just check the spotlights work as well still so we'll put the spotlights on and the spotlights I've got switched from here incidentally that's the high beam sensor light there which actually I never use anyway I leave it off I don't like it but anyway it's there okay so spotlights and LED are on that's all good so let's take it off um, off full, uh, full beam so we'll just take it off full beam now, leaving the LED on. Okay, it's off full beam. Take it round, and sure enough, everything's gone off. Perfect, absolutely perfect. So it does look like you can pick up off that. Obviously, I've got no real way of testing the high beam sensor, so I'll put them back on full beam, and I'll put the high beam sensor light on. But I need to shine a light probably into the sensor to see whether it will go off. Maybe I'll get a torch and see if I can do that. Okay, so before I tape this up, I actually cut the plugs off in the end. It's just too big really, I don't really need it. Uh, so just join the solder together. So as I said, all the, the reds together and then the original black from the steady with the green from the uh, light force harness. And I'll just tape all that up and uh, put some more concertina uh, corrugated tubing over it and then uh, secure it all away nicely. So cabling's in, conduits in, everything's tucked under the conduit. I actually put the relay, put the relay in here, 
there was a hole already in the side of the vehicle so just put it in there fed the wires through down the side and actually at the front used uh, use the cable kind of you can't really see down there but use the uh, where the cable goes through the spotlights took it up through the um sorry get it around there ready for you through the spotlight hole so that we don't have any second sort of routings going on anyway that's from the front uh cables through now so we'll put the front back together and then we'll look at getting the cable um routed through to the engine bay and to do that go through down here um, in this corner uh, usually push a bit of wire through first get a wire through and then um, tape the uh, cable to the end of it put a bit of silicon on it silicon spray and then pull it through so those of you not taking the trims off the Prado I'll just go through it really quickly with you okay first job is obviously to get the mat out of the way um, these are max pros so they cover up uh, latch over the side so let's get those right out of the way um next job so a bit of advice if you're going to do any work get some trim removal tools they are worth their weight in gold off ebay or somewhere really cheap won't cost you much but really worth it once you've got them okay first job is to get this trim off so literally just put it underneath you can actually use your fingers for this put it up slowly and then we just lift it up that's it and then up and then we just put it up like that just watch these little catches make sure they all stay behind and you've got them all they obviously locate into those holes there so that's got that one off next job is you have to remove this piece here hopefully you can see that there is a, a little black um, plastic um, threaded fixing on the side just under the accelerator pedal just you have to unscrew it probably by hand and once it gets near the end you can pull it off but you can see it's like a little plastic retaining thing there that goes in there and then once you've done that you can pull this forward and that comes off obviously mine comes off quite easy because i've had it on and off a few times uh but uh you've got one locating pin at the top of it take that one off okay next job is uh is to go further up to this panel um first thing to do is remove the seal so we'll just pull the door seal off just tuck that over the door somewhere out the way and then you need your trim tool put that under there and that will come off like that really easy uh, you can see I've had this off a few times before uh, and that's in there and then the next job is you have to remove this piece here um, there are two 10 mil nuts either side uh, one right under here so we just remove that and we'll take that one off okay that one's off and then there is one on the other side as well as there's actually a screw in the middle and take those both off and when that's done you can just pull this forward and there you go Okay, before we feed the wire through, I thought I actually would go over something I didn't do very well in a previous video about the high beam wiring and where you tap it off. Okay, so here goes for you guys. I've uh, promised you this for a long time. Okay, so when I did the steady wiring, uh, you can just see the labels in here. There's a D and a 2. So, uh, D I'm not using, and I'll refer to the diagram on the steady website about that one. Um, but number two comes in and it joins this green wire can you see that green I'm using this connector it's joining the green wire that goes to the um, auto high beam switch okay so that's where it goes guys number two on the steady harness from the light goes to the green wire on the high beam switch okay so I'm also tapping off for um, dash illumination. So when the lights are on, uh, and that's from here. So I'm taking the green wire on the end switch, which is here, okay. I'm just tapping off it to get a feed 
for dash illumination so when the lights are on the switch lights up I'm actually using that for a few different things here I'm joining them all together for that as you can see so hopefully you find that useful and now I'm going to feed the wire through so finally managed to actually get a bit of wire through I've got quite a lot of wires going through now and I've also got my uh, pump in the corner so you can't really see it now I've got my uh, compressor in the corner there so it's now really making it very hard to get any more wires in but I finally managed to get a thin metal wire through with a screwdriver pushing a hole through it and then pushing it through eventually so little advice here obviously I've wired it without putting too much stress on the wire all the way around the wire here uh, a bit of PVC tape on it and now I actually put across some uh, silicon spray on the PVC like that and then hopefully uh, I might just put some on the other side and hopefully we'll pull that through and that will help it through okay okay quickly before we shut it all back up so I'm actually putting a uh, steady switch in here but you can get obviously one from light force as well uh, they're all very very similar in terms of wiring they come with their own wiring uh, loom so I'm obviously having to join that to the light force plug here so um, that's that little round plug that you get with the light force with the switch on the end I've taken the switch off sorry I've actually joined it already but just to give you a confirmation of the color codes so the blue coming from here from the light force wire actually is the switched wire and I put it onto the blue of the steady because I tested the steady and that's the correct one hopefully anyway uh, and then you've got uh, a brown in here uh, and I've joined which is uh, a switched brown wire so that's going to the switch part and that's going to the source uh, the white uh, which is what we call the source um, so that is the source for the relay uh, and that goes through to the steady so confirmation that's brown on the light force is joined to white the uh, only other one is obviously the black is neutral so that's black is negative to negative so on both they're both black so that's pretty easy so you've got a negative and you've got a source coming from and then to the relay or sorry from and to the relay so anyway so that's, those are the two switch wires and it's negative and there you go and then the red one the red one on the steady is dash illumination and as i showed you earlier that's uh, joined into my spaghetti junction here i should actually create proper terminal block here really shouldn't i yes i know but i haven't got around to that um, anyway, also quickly before I close it all up, I solder all my wires. Um, I know you can crimp and do all that stuff, just personal preference, that's all. I prefer to solder on, on wires like this where there's no tension. Where, uh, where there is tension, I will crimp and solder. Um, okay, but in this case. So we're all done. Uh, we should be all good here. I might just give it a test before we go back, but uh, no need to show you that one and I'll close it all up. So quick update before I close it all up and I did actually uh, do some testing what I didn't like was that with the wiring that I showed you with the lights here the illumination on the uh, steady switch I got here wasn't on until the thing was on high beam so normally obviously the lights have got uh, sorry the switches have got lights inside them so you can see them after dark and once your headlights go on even on low beam these all light up so uh, they didn't didn't do it in this case what I actually realized was that it's all to do with the neutrals on these switches and how they, they're supplied with neutrals and some other switches have dual neutral supplies one is a, is a proper neutral to the body another one is a neutral coming from the circuit for the smart harness so as I showed you earlier I connected the neutral of this switch to the neutral in the uh, light force loom that didn't work so I've cut that off now and actually terminated the neutral from the steady switch directly to my earth point here so I actually have an earth point here that I use so I've put it in there now so uh, and then the neutral coming from the light force harness I'm not using I've just uh, taped it into the loom now so I'm only using the two switch wires from the light force harness anyway quick tip but I know there's been some questions about lights on these before it is so although my my positive is good you're not getting the right negative to bring the light on so that's where that came about anyway that's all fixed now 
And one final thing when I'm in here, I think earlier I said this is the steady harness. So uh, with the numbers on it. So that is the piggyback adapter to be absolutely clear that goes through into here. So you, you connect it in here. It's a very simple process to remove the shroud around the steering column. You plug it in here and then the existing plug goes into it. Um, and then uh, there's just the wires coming out of that. And that is, and as I said, I'm going to put a diagram in for this, uh, but this is number two on that piggyback harness. And as you remember, I said that tapes into or connects into the green wire on the back of the auto high beam switch here. I know I showed you that earlier. I'm just showing you it again, just to be sure. Uh, and then the D one, the D is actually dash illumination. Uh, you can use that for illumination and I had already been doing this before I put this loom in so I just continue using my dash illumination from this little group here but you could also make a little connector there rather than having to tap into one of the other lights so if you do get the piggyback adapter and this is the first time you've done it use the D for dash illumination but remember earthing is the key point on lights so everything's good I'll tape it up and we'll do a final uh, finish off so we're all back together now. I'll do a quick wrap up. Uh, for those of you very observant will notice that actually the light has moved slightly. Originally I used the brackets to put it slightly under here. Uh, although it was uh, literally in here just above the sensor. The sensor was working fine. Uh, it actually was okay but it was a little bit behind the end of these. And I was more also concerned about it. It's adding another level of blocking for the airflow. And I wasn't really very keen on that, um, so just didn't like it. So I've actually rotated it a little bit up. Uh, I've actually had to swap everything round with the brackets. So uh, just so you know, I bought these um, clamping brackets. So these actually came from Steady. These are the Steady bull bar brackets. And because of the angle of that bracket, remember I showed you at the beginning, I've been able to use that bracket angle to get that there and get it to the angle I like. So it's actually just slightly below the bull bar, uh, but it's not forward of anything else. Obviously the laws in this uh, state are that your lights mustn't be above the bull bar, uh, mustn't be forward of the uh, bar either. So uh, anyway, that's all good, but I quite like it there. Um, and I did have a lot of trouble, as I said, identifying the right bracket for this. Interestingly, the, the angle bracket that came with the light force, so remember I showed you that curved one that goes down the back, uh, has a square hole here and they supply uh, some bolts with the square um, bit towards the end of the thread however that squared thread or the squared bolt doesn't is too small for the hole in the same bracket that they supply I don't understand that uh, because I was hoping to put those through and obviously just tighten up from the back long story short though I actually upped it to a bigger size bolt anyway because that was only like a I want to say eight mil six mil I can't really say it's not really very big anyway so put in a bigger stainless steel bolt uh, which does actually self locate within that square hole but a little bit odd I have to say because obviously I can't get at the head of this one now bolted it down here actually just painting it over now because uh, I don't like the silver look of it but stainless steel um, bolt nut uh, and I've got a nylock on there as well to stop it coming loose so yeah anyway there we go all good I didn't also actually say anything about why am I putting a light bar on I uh, guess it's all personal but I actually found that these steadies were too bright so uh, where I live uh, I've got a few country roads to go down to get back to my house nothing particularly long a few windy roads but I want good lights um, the lights on the Prado are actually really good, so it's probably something I don't really need. But I did find that the spotlights were just too bright. You know, anybody anywhere near coming onto you, it's just really challenging to use them in, in a sort of narrower, windy roads. Um, so I wanted a bar that gave me a shorter throw, a bit more of a wider spread. Uh, so I can see a few hundred meters not you know eight nine hundred meters So uh, that was actually the reason why I put that on and I've already used it and it's actually great It's much better. It uh, lights up what I need and doesn't go too far Anyway, there's a lot in this video. I've repeated myself a few times about a few things But I did get a lot of questions originally, so I'm hope I've answered all those if not Let me know and I'll try and cover it off in something else. 
Thank you for watching.